Welcome to Astro Academy Principia. Featuring astronaut Tim Peake on board the International Space Station, Sophie Allen on the ground in the experiment room, and myself, Anu Ojar, at the National Space Academy. On every scale from atoms thousands of times smaller than can be seen by the human eye to the solar system and beyond, we see collision processes. And to understand the physics of collisions, we first need to understand the concept of momentum. Momentum is defined as being the product of an object's mass and its velocity. And Sir Isaac Newton showed that during any collision process between two isolated objects, the total momentum of this closed system after the collision is the same as the momentum before. Momentum is conserved. And we can see this very clearly with a familiar toy, Newton's cradle. We're going to consider the motion of the balls just before and just after each collision process. If the ball on the left-hand side is raised and released, it strikes the remaining balls with a certain impact velocity and therefore momentum. During the collision, shock waves move through the system and the end ball, which has the same mass as the first one, moves away with virtually the same velocity as the inbound ball. A ball which has now come to a complete standstill. We can repeat the demonstration using two moving balls, three balls, and even four. And in each case, we can see that the total momentum immediately before each collision was the same as the total momentum immediately after each collision, no matter which combination I choose. But conservation of momentum alone isn't enough to explain what's happening here, either in Newton's cradle or in any other collision process. We also need to understand another concept, the idea of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy that an object has due to its motion, and it depends on two factors, the mass of the object and its speed. From the equation for the kinetic energy of an object, we can see that it's the speed that makes a big difference. Doubling the speed of an object will quadruple its kinetic energy but giving it five times the speed will make the kinetic energy 25 times bigger. This has major implications for any spacecraft orbiting the Earth. For example, the International Space Station, which orbits the Earth at 400 kilometers altitude at around eight kilometers per second. At that speed, the kinetic energy of this one pound coin, which has a mass of only 10 grams, is about the same as my car when it's travelling at 70 miles per hour down the motorway. So collisions with even tiny pieces of space debris travelling at orbital velocities can damage or totally destroy spacecraft. But what happens to kinetic energy in a collision process? Well, there's a whole range of possibilities depending on the physical makeup of the two surfaces that actually collide. If I drop this rubber ball onto a hard surface, we can see that it rebounds up to almost the same height from which I released it. This means that its speed of rebound was almost the same as its impact speed. It lost hardly any kinetic energy during the collision. This is an example of a collision that is very nearly elastic. But if I drop the ball onto sand, it comes to a complete standstill. All of its kinetic energy has been dissipated through thermal, sound and shockwave processes within the sand and ball itself, both of which are slightly warmer. This is an example of an inelastic collision. So to understand collision processes, we need to take into account both the conservation of momentum and what happens to the kinetic energy during the process, i.e. how elastic the collision was. We'll start with two balls of equal mass. The inbound ball stops completely, transferring all of its kinetic energy to the outgoing ball, which moves off at the same velocity. 
just as predicted. Now let's have a much less massive moving ball hitting a much more massive stationary target. The small ball rebounds off the much larger ball, with almost all of its inbound speed maintained. The larger ball recoils, but only slightly, just as predicted. And finally, we have the much more massive ball hitting the stationary small ball. The massive ball is slowed down only slightly, but the small ball shoots away with a much higher velocity, nearly twice as high as the inbound ball speed, just as predicted by our equations. Here in the Columbus module, I'm going to repeat Sophie's collisions. But this time, we need to do the conservation of momentum modeling individually in each of the x, y, and z directions, because momentum is a vector quantity. So uh, a collision between two large hollow spheres. So let's place one of these hollow spheres here and see if I can get it to uh, remain pretty stationary. And then the next one here. A moving large mass hitting a stationary ball of the same mass. OK, I'll try that one again. And uh, again, the difficulty here is uh, items with low mass, low mass objects. It's very hard to make them uh, stationary in microgravity. Actually, objects that are more massive, it's far easier for that to keep them still. Try and hit it next time. Okay. It's like playing s space snooker. A moving small mass ball hitting a large stationary mass. Repeat that experiment. So let's put the large hollow sphere here and try and I'll try and get it as stationary as possible. And then impart a motion on it with a small sphere. Okay, the next demonstration will be impacting a small sphere with a large sphere. In each case, we can see similar behaviour to what we saw on the ground. OK, I'm at high risk of uh, losing small spheres in the Columbus module, but let's try this one again. But it's made more complex by the fact that we're having to work in three spatial dimensions, X, Y and Z. This sort of collision modelling is giving us new insights into the behaviour of matter at all scales, from subatomic high energy collisions of particles approaching the speed of light, to Earth's possible collision with a Mars sized planet billions of years ago, an event which may have led to the formation of our own moon early in the solar system's history. And these fundamental tools of momentum and kinetic energy modelling show that we can still use Newton's genius to predict what happens in all dynamical systems during any collision interaction. <laughs>